Hello everyone and welcome to today's session on Sage Business Cloud Accounting. My name is Sunna and I'm part of the education team and I'll be taking you through to this morning's session. I have muted the lines and if you have any questions you can add them in the chat panel or the questions and answers panel and we can address them at the end of this session. In today's agenda we'll be covering off the objectives. I'll take you through the key features in accounting a demonstration, and then lastly, a recap session on everything that we've gone through. So today's objectives, hopefully by the end of the session, you'll be able to understand how to set up your business from scratch, entering customers and suppliers and products and services, set up a bank account, manage and set up your accounting settings, view the summary section, raise a sales and purchase invoice credit note and look at the quotes and estimates area view journals and correct transactions record quick entries and review the reports either the management and detailed reports as well here are some of the key features so we'll be going through recording and importing in any customers and suppliers products and services how to review and edit any of your settings, record income expenses, quotes, estimates, and credit notes, how to enter journals, set up the bank, enter and upload quick entries and run all the reports, and what is correct transactions. Now let's go into the software so I can show you how to actually start using Sage Business Cloud Accounting. So now we're in the accounting license. Here I'm in the summary dashboard screen. Within the main screen, this is the sales tab that I'm in. You'll be able to see how your business is doing visually. You, if you scroll down a little bit, you've got outstanding sales invoices, overdue sales invoices, quotes and estimates, top five customers and debtors, and your VAT return information. If you go and select purchases, this will do the same. At the moment, if you go into it, it will just give you a month breakdown. But if you wanted to change the date and look a bit further back, then you can just amend the date, click calculate here. It will then show you a bit more information if there was any applicable. You've also got your cash flow statement here and the cash flow forecast as well. I'm going to start off in the settings area just to show you how to get your client set up. So if I go into settings, Here we've got the business preference section. So this will show you about your business record and transaction settings. The main thing that you'd probably want to set up is your invoice template for your sales. So to do that, you would go into templates and logos and choose the actual format. So we do actually have uh, nine templates to choose from, as you can see here. So if you just select the one that you like the most in terms of the layout, that will then appear. You can see I've already uploaded my company logo. If I wanted to add an association logos, I can do that. So in here, if I just go into this section and I'll try and add in a few logos. You can also click the preview section here and this will show you how your layout will look like. So as you can see, I've got my logo at the top, the theme color in the middle, and I've got the association logos there. And if you're happy with this, you can just click save. So if I just click save here, that will then save that and apply that to all my template. So that's the templates done. In document preferences, this is where you can change document headings for the actual invoices or the descriptions in terms of in the headings of your sales invoices or your quotes and estimates. You can change the terms and conditions here. So you've got the invoice, delivery note here, quotes, estimates. So we can pop in something in there. In the notes section, you can see the extra notes that I've entered in as well. Again, that's up to you whether you want to do that and you would just click save here again. Going back into settings. 
Um, the other thing that you would set up is the chart of accounts. So if I go into the chart of accounts, if you did want to add new codes in here or amend code names, I'll show you that as well. So to change the code name, you would just click onto the ledger account here. And if you just wanted to say brought forward on here, you can just add that in. and just click save and that will then amend in there for you. You can also create new codes. So if you need to create new ledger codes for sales, I can type sales in here. The sales code start from 4,000. So if I want to do 4,100, I can just enter that in in there. And the ledger name, I can just say sales type two or something. and then click save onto that and that will then be created so if i do a search for 4100 you can see that my code has now been created we've got accounting dates and vat so in here you would need to set up your start date and date VAT details, so we've got cash accounting, standard, not registered, flat rate, cash based, flat rate, invoice based. And um, if any of these apply, you can do that. And then lastly, to authenticate your login, you would just click onto this button and that will then take you into the HMRC government gateway, allowing you to re-authenticate because you would have already done that depending on what program you're already using. So this is where you would just set that up. Analysis type. So in here, if you wanted to set up cost centers and departments, you can also do that within here. We've also got the ability to set up the CIS. So if you go into the construction industry scheme section here, you can set up yourself as a subcontractor or a contractor by ticking these boxes and entering in the unique tax reference, accounts reference and the deduction rate for the subcontractor. This will then create the appropriate codes that you need and also allow you to do the submission via the reporting. You've got at the bottom the opening balances for your customer, supplier, banks and nominal codes as well if you needed to do that. So that's how you would set up the settings. Now I'm going to move into the next section which is, is entering in your customers and suppliers because that's what you would normally need to have in order to enter in opening balances. So we have two ways of doing this. We, we can either click on new customer and create them this way or we can create them via an import. To create a customer, you would just enter in the business name in here. You can then you can then enter in an email address. And then put in an address. And then you can just click save onto that, select the default code that it's going to, and then just click save. And that will then allow us to create the customer within here. The other option is importing in the customer by going into the import section. There's a template here that I can download. So here for the template, you've got the reference, you've got the company name, You've got the currency, the credit limit, the address, the contact name, the number, the main contact type of address, and so forth. I know there's a lot in here, but if you just wanted to bring in a customer, you wouldn't need to bring in all of this information. So I'm just going to show you what things that you might want to have in here. So I've got the customer reference, the customer name. I've got the address information. What I am going to remove is the rest of it. So, for instance, this is what I've got. The customer reference name, address, contact name, a number, mobile number, 
and the email. So I would just click save into that and to import, you would just go into choose file, find that file, click open and then just upload here and that will then bring all the customers in for you. To do the suppliers, it's exactly the same. If I click new supplier, this screen is exactly the same as before, except for the default codes will apply to the purchasing codes. And you can then import in the suppliers again in the same way by a template. And again, it's the same import process as I've just shown you. So that's how we would create any customers and suppliers. So let's start posting now. So within sales, you can create quotes and estimates, invoices, credit notes, and quick entries. So if I wanted to create a quote, I would just go into this section. And then you've got the ability to do a new estimate or a quote, select that. And then in here, search for a customer. So I'm just gonna go for the garden center one. And then in the description, I'm just gonna type in sales enter in an amount and then just click save. The reason why my notes and terms and conditions aren't showing up in here because I haven't entered any for the quotes, terms and conditions or notes, so that's why it's blank. We've also got the ability to upload attachments at the bottom. So again, you could just click onto this link and it will allow you to upload files here. So this could be a CSV, PDF, a picture, anything like that, and you would just click save. Once you click save here, this will give you the option to create an invoice at the top by clicking onto this button. You can also send this quote to your client by clicking email. This will then verify the email address as you can see it's saying that this email address is not correct, but I can choose to send that anyway. So you've got that in here. If you wanted to create this invoice, we would just click create invoice and that will then make this into the invoice. So it will take us into the sales invoicing section which as you can see is similar. So here, if I just select that, now you can see my notes and terms and conditions have pulled through. Again, you've got the attachment icon here to upload any files. And once I'm happy with this, I will just click save. This is now issued the invoice with the number, as you can see at the top there. And what I can do is if I click print preview, I can view the layout of my invoice. And I can also change this ascent if I wanted to. What I did want to show you is the invoice timeline here. So it will time and date stamp when it was created. If I send this to my client via email, it will also time and date stamp when that was done. When the clients view the actual email, this will then time and date stamp that as well. And when it's been paid, again, we've got a full end to end solution of what's happening with the invoice here. You can make an invoice reoccurring if you wanted to by selecting this option, which says reoccur. This will then take us into the reoccurring screen, which you can set up the frequency for. So the frequency is applicable for daily, weekly, monthly. So if I wanted to set this up for every month and, and if I wanted it to start from today's date. So if I just select the 26th. And then click save that will then issue that for me within the reoccurring section here it will tell you when the next one will be as well which is 26th of august it will tell you if any are finished you can also put these on pause if you needed to as some clients might not be able to pay due to their circumstances then you can put the reoccurrence on hold if you needed to as well so within sales, that was in the sales section. To create a new invoice is this button, new invoice, which will take us into the garden center section that we were in before, which is here. And you would just fill this out as necessary. And the other section for the reoccurrence is the reoccurring invoices section, which is next to the invoices section. And that will then take us into here. So that's the invoices for the sales. Now let's look at the quick entries. So for quick entries, you have two options. You can either create a quick entry by selecting quick entry here at the top. This is the same as batch entry. So what we would just do is select a customer, enter in a reference, and then allocate that to the relevant code that I need it to, enter in an amount, it would then add the VAT on for me and I can enter in transactions this way. The other way you've got is the import 
So if I just drop this down, go into import quick entries, I've got a template that I can import here. So as you can see, this is the template type. So we've got the type, credit note or invoice, the customer reference, the date, the customer name, the invoice reference, what ledger code it belongs to, any further detail, what's the net amount, what VAT rate it is, um, the VAT amount and the total there. And then to import this in, you would just go into, come out of this section and then click choose file, import in this file, and then just click upload here. And that will then make them appear into this section. Purchases works exactly the same, except for there's no reoccurring purchases. So within purchases, I can go into invoices here to create an invoice. So I just click new invoice. And then in here, select a supplier. I don't have one, so I can create one. So in here, if I wanted to enter in a supplier, So entering in an email address, click save. So I've got my supplier in there in description. I'm just going to enter in what I'm getting and then I'm just going to enter an amount and then just click save. Again, you've got the paperclip icon at the bottom to upload attachments if you needed to, but once you're happy, just click save. That will then create the invoice and you can record the payment in here. Quick entries is exactly the same. You just go into quick entries and purchases, click new quick entry. Fill this out um, as before, or you can use the import section where we can import it in as well by using the template. So those are the two options that we've got for the purchases. So we've probably covered off around half of what we can actually do in accounting. I'm just gonna go off. I'm just gonna show you the last few sections. So in the next area, we're gonna be covering off banking. I'm now gonna take you into the banking area. So if I just click on banking at the top here, when you first go in, you'll be greeted with two bank accounts. You have the main bank account and the cash account. If you needed to create a new account, you would just go into the new section at the top, click bank account, and then create a new account that you need. You can just then click save and that will then add in a new tile. We've got a few different tabs here as well. All will show you all the bank accounts that you've got. Inactive will show you an inactive account. So if you I wanted to have, say, for example, loan or account in here and you wanted to just make that inactive, you could just save that within here. All the active banks will appear here. The main purpose of the bank account is to use the online bank feeds or you can manually enter in your transactions. So in terms of setting it up for the online bank feeds, you would just click connect bank in here and then select the bank account that you would like to connect up with. Not all the bank accounts are shown on the tiles. So in that instance, I can then do a search for the bank that I would like, for example, accept the terms and conditions, click continue. This will then allow me to go onto the app through the online banking login page. So I would just need to fill in these details as I would for online banking. I'm just going to show you a bank feed that I've already got set up. So I'm going to go into here. I'm going to click onto this link that says no transactions. 
and that should take me into my bank feeds. As you can see here, I've got a list of transactions. It will tell me at the top how many transactions we have, so there's 200 here. The whole main purpose of this is to match, create and transfer. What match means is you're allocating this amount to an invoice that you've already created. What create means is you're allocating this amount to nominal codings from the list and this should be all similar to stage 50. And then lastly, what transfer means is you're transferring it between different bank accounts. So those are the three different options. Anything in black is money coming in and anything in red is money going out. To show you how to match an invoice, I'm just going to click the match button and in here I'm just going to select an invoice for £100 and then I'm going to make a part payment of £10 to this invoice just so that you can see how easy it is to pay off and match. So in here I will just click match and that will then allocate the payment for me. The other option that you've got is £75 there. So if this is a payment, say for example, telephone, I can then search for telephone and in here I can put in the reference telephone and click create and that will then post that for me. And then lastly, you've got the transfer option. So you can just select what bank account it's going into and transfer that out in there for you. We've also got rules at the top, so rules you can create to make ease in terms of your transactions. So this could be direct debit payments that you would like to set up or if you wanted to automate sales, you can. So to create a new rule, I can go into here. If it's to do with payments, I can type in, for example, rent. If it's to do with a particular amount, say, for example, if it's £100, I can select that. And if it's between a particular date, I can also set that up as well. If I just wanted to leave that as it is, I can. And in the ledger account here, I can just search for rent, click save. Any rules that I create, I can create them in this section. And then what I would do is come out of here, click apply these rules to pending transactions. It will then go through and apply any of the rules that I've created to the transactions from my bank feed to make it easier in terms of posting. So as you can see, it's matched it to four payment. So if I go into review these transactions, you can see where the rule has been applied there for me. I'm going to go back into banking and show you how to enter things in manually. So in the banking area, you would just go into the new section. If it's to do with sell receipt, you would select this. We've got a few different options in here. Customer receipt is to do with customer allocation. So I can just select the customer in question. I'll then be able to see all the transactions in relation to that. I can then select whether I would like to pay it or make a part payment. So if I wanted to make a part payment of £44 today, I can just select here 44, click apply, choose how they paid and then it will then allocate £44 to this transaction. Going back in, we have other receipts. So this is for one-off payments that you wanted to enter in. You can use the nominal coding structure here to make any postings in relation to that. Just need to select a code and then enter in the amount at the top. That will then appear in the total choose how it's going in, whether that's from a different bank account, and then you just click save into this section. For the money coming out, purchase payments, supplier payment will give you allocation to all your suppliers, other payment, one-off transactions again, or the list of full coding will be here. And then you've got the refund option at the top there. So that's the banking section covered. We've got the last two sections to cover off, which is adjustments and reporting. So in adjustments, we've got journals. In journals, you can just go into new journal. In here, I can create a reference and then enter in a journal. And then 
allocate that off to the bank and then just click save. In terms of the journals that you can create, you can copy them. So the whole purpose of the copy functionality is to allow you to amend this. So for example, if you're doing wages or if you're doing reoccurring entries, then this would be useful in that instance. You can also go into a journal and reverse it, delete it and edit it if you needed to. Another section that we've got within the adjustment section is correct transactions. So if I go into here, what you would do is click on make correction, select the action that you would like to create. So you can search for amounts, dates, transaction types, ledger. So if it's the coding that I want to change, so I've posted something to 4,100, I can do a search for all them transactions. And if I wanted to allocate these back to the normal uh, 4,000 codes, I can select that, click next. I can then choose what I would like to change it to. So I can only change the code here. So in here, I'm going to do 4,000. And then in the reason, I can just type in and then click review, click update, and that will then amend that for me. So this is a really handy way of changing bulk transactions easily and quickly. If I click done, you'll then be able to see that in here. The last section is the reporting area. So in reporting, we've got quite a few extensive reports that you can use to benefit your business and give analysis. So if I go into the profit and loss standard, you can see the standard view of the profit for the month. Or if I want to change it to this year, you can just click calculate here. If I wanted to see a month by month breakdown, I would click on to switch to comparative report and that will then give me the monthly breakdown analysis. As you can see, I had a quiet month during April, May and June. And now within July, you can see a bit of activity here. All of this is drill downable. So if I wanted to know what this £63 is, I can click into it and it will allow me to drill down into this section as well. You can also export all these reports as a CSV and a PDF. We've also got balance sheet, trial balance, age debtors, age creditors. We've got the audit trail, nominal activity, chart of accounts, and you've got your VAT return here. In terms of your VAT return, it's really simple and easy to do. You just click create VAT return in here. This is what you'll see when you first set up your account. So whether you need to apply for MTD or not, you would need to select this option. If it is yes, it will then uh, allow you to authenticate your login. For now, I'm just going to select no. I'm just going to acknowledge this, but you wouldn't do this. You would select yes. I'm just going to show you the VAT return area. So you need to confirm the period that you're doing the VAT return for. So in here, I'm just going to select that date, click calculate. It will then show me some of the VAT due in that period. And then I can print a detailed report by going into here. Wait for that report to generate at the top. And that will give me a transaction breakdown of all the VAT recurred in any of the postings that I've done in terms of the invoices or anything else that I've posted to as well. And then to submit, you would have a third option for your MTD, which will allow you to submit to the government gateway as well. Another report that's handy is the audit trail that you would probably need to use for day to day purposes if you're having your clients come in and use the system as well. So in here you can do a search for transaction number, you could do a search for an amount or a specific person and you can see that and then in here we can change around with the dates. So if you're looking for a particular transaction between a period of a couple of months, you can then do a search in here as well. At the moment, I'm in summary review. If I click on detailed, it will then give me the detailed analysis for the breakdown here as well.
So that's all the sections covered off within the area. This is how you would actually get set up and running with accounting. If you do get stuck with anything, we have a help section at the top, which you can go to at any point. And in here, this has an extensive list of help articles, videos that you can watch as well. So here, all these different settings, all these different areas, you could just go in, for example, banking, how to set up. So you could just go into the bank account area. It will show you how to enter in opening balances, how to add in. And there's also videos, like I said, as well. Now I'm going to take you back to the presentation. Now, just to recap, hopefully now you know how to set up your customers and suppliers, set up the bank account, use the reports and journals and how to manage your settings in business cloud accounting. Let's finish off with the summary. Now you should be able to understand how to set up your business from scratch, entering customers and suppliers, set up the bank account, manage and set up your accounting settings, view the summary, raise a sales and purchase invoice, quotes and estimates, view journals and correct transactions, and record quick entries and review any reports and detailed reports as well. Now what's available to you via support? So you can talk to your practice success manager on 0191 479 5999. We also have uh, more webinars for you to get more information at. If you do get stuck with anything, we do have a dedicated help team that will help you with any queries that you have 24 seven. And the number for that is 0191 479 5911. If you haven't already checked out our Sage University site, please do. On there, you can view a range of courses that are free and get accredited. If you do have any queries to do with learning or education, you can drop my team an email and the email address is accountant.education at sage.com. As a partner to over 1 million UK businesses, we want you to know that we are here to help you to overcome any challenges that you are facing. Thank you for attending this session and hopefully you found it useful and I'll catch you on many others that we have to offer.